Okay guys, I just thought I'd do a quick video on stress, cortisol and your health. Um, cortisol is our stress response in our body and it impacts your health in a big way so this video will help you identify what's going on. Okay, when you are stressed your body releases cortisol. It's your body's natural fight or flight response to a situation. Okay, so that can be an actual situation or even a perceived situation and your body will start releasing cortisol to get you into a fight or flight type response. Okay, so what happens? <clears throat> These are the types of stresses that can cause that type of response. Okay, so you'll see on the left excessive stress hormones, safety, <clears throat> financial stress, food stresses, issues with relationships over love and sex, you might have a toxic environment, dirty air, chlorinated tap water, um, ELM pollution, electromagnetic, medical drugs that you might be taking, industrial toxins if you work in that sort of industry, um, even dis disrupted sleep-wake cycles is a stress to your body, stinking thinking, the thoughts, words and deeds, and exercise, whether it's too much or not enough. Um, so what happens, we're basically activating that side of this um, the seesaw and we end up in that permanent sort of stress response the whole time. What happens on the other side of that, you'll see in the green box, is you get suppressed repair hormones. So your melatonin goes down, your growth hormone goes down, your DHEA, which is your main anti-aging hormone, goes down. Testosterone goes down, so you end up with a lower metabolic rate, lower energy. Estrogen gets smucked around with. You can have immune messengers, suppression, and blood sugar imbalances, which we talked about on another video. So you can see that most people have these stresses impacting their lives on a daily basis and we get stuck into that sympathetic fight or flight drive even though we might be in a relaxed state, various things can cause it inside the body. Um, so the idea is to undo it. Okay, so what stress does to the inside of your body? Okay, so if we start at the top in the red circle with stressor, that's your brain, um, can be an actual um, stress, so you might be getting cut off in traffic, you might even see a line, which is the classic example, um, you might have even a perceived stress, you might be under financial stress or emotional stress, so it doesn't even have to be an actual um, stress for itself, it can be perceived and it can have the same response in your body. Okay, so the stressor impacts the brain, the brain picks it up that you're either stressing about it or it's an actual stressor. <clears throat> that signals to the adrenal glands to start producing cortisol. The response once that cortisol starts floating around the body is your eyes will dilate, your lungs dilate and expand, your heart rate and blood pressure goes up so it can deliver nutrients and energy to the cells, um, your stomach and gastrointestinal tract slows down or pretty much shuts off during a stress response, your kidney starts retaining sodium to pump up blood pressure and blood volume so you can deliver all the oxygen and the energy through to your muscles which is the next one in ready for that fight or flight response. Um, your liver, the muscles release all the glucose that they've had stored, your liver releases all the glucose that floats around in the blood, gets picked up by the pancreas, releasing insulin and that shuttles it into the cells and then it's all go from there. So you can see that that stressor, even whether it's actual or perceived, has quite a cascading series of events that happen inside your body. Um, like I said, most of us are in a stress response the whole time. So if we have a look, we can see that the adrenal glands are going to be pumping out cortisol the whole time. Your heart rate and blood pressure may be up depending on how, what stage of that cycle you're at. Um, you might have indigestion and stuff like that um, as a result of your, your gastrointestinal tract shutting down um, and stuff like that. So yeah, a fair amount of stuff can go on in the body when you're under a stress response. Okay, so the negative effects of high cortisol. So remember, cortisol is released during the stressful periods. Um, this is what happens when you've got high cortisol floating around in your blood. So you'll have increased appetite. You might find that you're always hungry. Um, you get decreased melatonin, so you start getting that um, imbalance between your repair and your regenerate hormones and your tissue breakdown hormones. So decreased melatonin production, you end up with sleep problems. Um, you end up with a decreased muscle mass as a result, which is lower metabolic rate overall. So you'll find it harder to lose weight. You end up with increased visceral fat, so not only are we lowering our metabolic rate, but we're also sending more foods to fat storage. So that equals weight gain. We end up with increased blood sugars, so we end up with energies highs and lows. 
um, increased inflammation as a result of high cortisol. There's a lot of tissue breakdown, a lot of overdriving of the adrenals, and a lot of activation of the immune system. So three pretty big systems that actually just break down the body over time. You end up with decreased thyroid activity, so that again is a lower metabolic rate. You might find that you're getting cold often, or you, you have problems um, controlling your temperature, your body temperature. Um, you can end up with decreased pituitary activity. Um, pituitary is your master gland at the base of your brain um, that dictates most other hormone levels in your body, so you end up with lower hormone production overall. Um, you end up with a decreased immune system, so you have might be more prone to infections, you might get colds and flus often. Um, the other thing is you end up with increased frontal lobe activity, so you can get personality changes that can affect your motivation and your mood and your outlook towards life. Um, you end up with decreased brain function, which is the early signs of Alzheimer's, which is we all don't want, um, and decreased bone formation, which is a big one for females as well as males, actually, with the, the occurrence of osteoporosis. So high cortisol affects a lot of things across your body, and it just basically breaks it down um, and ends up with a lot of problems. So we need to address the high cortisol. Okay, if you've been going along with high cortisol for a long time and you, your body pretty much gives up the ghost, your adrenal glands get tired and then you'll be producing low amounts of cortisol, okay, so equally is devastating to your body. What happens when you have low cortisol floating around your blood? You end up with a lowered immune system response. Again, so you might get infections and colds and flu often. Um, you end up with blood sugar fluctuations. You might tend to be hypoglycemic or lightheaded or faint, which is characteristic amongst adrenal fatigue clients. Um, you end up with low blood pressure, so many people complain of being faint upon standing, lightheaded, and you also end up used to the low blood pressure with circulation problems, which is not a good one. You also end up with increased substance P, which is a hormone in the body associated with um, detection of pain, nausea, and also depression. Okay, um, Some people with low cortisol also have seasonal affective disorder, so cloudy days can make them feel a bit flat. Um, the occurrence of winter can also make them feel quite flat and depressed. Um, and then you also, because of the low cortisol, you have energy problems, so you end up with chronic fatigue. Um, you just feel like you're tired all the time due to the low cortisol and your adrenal glands being a bit tired and all these other things going on inside your body. So high cholesterol and low cortisol, um, sorry, high cortisol and low cortisol are two negative effects you want, you don't want in your body. Okay, so there's three general stages of adrenal fatigue. Okay, so we can see that um, we've got two markers there, 23 and 42 and nanomoles per litre of cortisol floating around the blood. Um, stage 1 is high cortisol, so you'll typically have a reading above 42. Most people feel pretty damn good at that stage, although there's other things that are going on inside their body that have, do affect their health in a big way, but most people feel pretty good because they've got lots of energy. Um, if that process goes long enough and you don't um, address the health stuff in the background that's causing it, you'll slide down into stage two, which is normal cortisol. This is where most people get tested by their GPs. Um, they come up normal, so they, the GP tells them that they didn't find anything because they're in that normal range. Um, yet there's often, a, these people suffer from a lot of symptoms, um, a lot of tiredness, and, and it doesn't help when their GP tells them that they didn't find anything. There's actually a lot of information there if their GP looked at it a bit harder. Um, and then given enough time again, you'll end up in stage three, so your adrenal glands are pretty tired, you've got other systems breaking down in your body and you'll end up with low cortisol overall. Um, just keep in mind there's no stage four, um, so when things get pretty bad and you, your symptoms are screaming at you, it's a definite red flag to be able to have a look at the reasons behind what's causing it and correct them for your ongoing longevity and health. Okay, so that's the three stages of adrenal fatigue, stage one, two and three. Okay, so how do you find out what's going on? Well, you can test your 24-hour cortisol rhythm. There's a great questionnaire on my homepage on my website that will tell you whether you're suffering from high cortisol or low cortisol. Um, and there's also, we've got a fantastic little test kit called the Adrenal Stress Profile Test Kit that basically tells you, measures the free hormones because it's done through saliva. Most of the GPs um, test your hormones and they test everything. So a lot of those hormones are bound hormones, bound by protein, which makes them unavailable or bio-inactive to the cell. Um, so we measure the free hormones that are actively available to your cells um, through this test kit and it spits out a 24-hour cortisol rhythm um, plus all your sex hormones and everything. So it yields um, a great deal of information on exactly what's going on in the background in regards to your various hormone levels. 
Okay, so once we, if you run that test, you can start to plot out what your cortisol rhythm looks like over a 24 hour period. Um, you'll see on the top slide, on the top part of the slide there, I've got a normal profile. Okay, so that black line is cortisol, the, the hormone that we just mentioned, the energizing hormone, and the white one is melatonin. So you'll see during a normal profile that that cortisol largely sort of peaks at about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning and then starts to slide down after that. Um, almost flat lines by about sort of 4, 5, 6 p.m. in the afternoon stays flat line during the night which allows for the melatonin to come up so your body's always in balance equal tissue breakdown to equal tissue repair so during the accelerating activity and the decelerating activity the red and the yellow boxes you've got tissue breakdown and then when you go to sleep and you repair it overnight um, it repairs all that damage from the day and you come out um, back out for the following day nice and strong but what happens in most people as you see at the bottom is you're most people have a stress profile. So you can see that black line, the cortisol stays elevated all the way through the day and into most of the night as well, even up to all the way through to 10 and 11 p.m. So what happens in the background? Basically, all your physical repair and your psychological repair gets pushed or narrowed down. So rather than having long times of repair, you've, you've um, decrease the amount of repair time your body has. Um, other issues that can go in the background is you might have problems sleeping, you wake up tired, you just feel you don't ever feel regenerated from sleep. Um, so the idea is if you've, most people have that stress profile is to adjust things in your life that will bring it back into a normal profile. Um, we definitely don't want like 18 hours a day of um, tissue breakdown. We want roughly equal 12 hours tissue breakdown to equal 12 hours tissue repair. Um, so just keep in mind that you greatly affecting your repair ability if you're um, suffering from a stress profile type analogy so very important okay so what to do about it okay so get tested first and foremost find out exactly what your cortisol rhythm is doing you'll be able to plot a graph like that and you'll see how irregular it is from the normal cycle um, the way to correct that is if you find an imbalance is to eat according to your metabolic type, okay, which is your ancestry, basically where you were from about 100 to 200 generations ago, largely dictates the same nutrition that your body likes to enjoy today. Um, the other side of that coin is to address all your toxins, um, a good little program that does all of that for you very um, efficiently is called the Home and the Body Makeover Program, it's very cheap, it's only about $300 um, and it takes you through 29 steps that corrects all the things in your life that upset the body body chemistry inside your body. Okay, so in the meantime, um, eat regularly, eat every two to three hours, small meals. Okay, we mentioned that blood sugars are directly tied to cortisol, so when blood sugars drop, cortisol will come up. If your adrenal glands are tired, they, they get a bit sick of trying to produce cortisol the whole time, so the idea is to provide that natural energy through foods, um, eating often every two to three hours, and always have a protein and a fat and a carb together. Never just eat a carbohydrate on its own, because you end up with blood sugar irregularities and other stuff we mentioned in other videos. Okay, exercise. The main one with that um, is don't over-exercise. Okay, I've got a lot of female clients that they get quite guilty if they're finding that they're not exercising every day, they think that they're going to get fat or they're not promoting their health, but often the case is that they're over-exercising or they're doing the wrong types of exercise, so long um, endurance cardio stuff is not generally prescribed if you've got adrenal fatigue you want short sharp sessions um, don't overdo it and always listen to your body afterwards if you're finding you're getting tired a couple of hours after exercising and you can't get that energy back then I think you've probably overdone it in the exercise based on your current body physiology okay so don't over exercise always go by the analogy less is more Okay, good quality foods, that's another big one when it comes to adrenal gl um, glands. You want to feed them the right foods through the metabolic typing and you also want those foods qualities to be really good. Um, keep in mind that caffeine will stimulate your adrenal glands, so will alcohol. So if you're suffering from adrenal fatigue, you might, you know, I know it's... Um, you tend to rush off for a coffee to provide you with that energy, but you're probably much better off having an actual balanced meal according to your metabolic type, skipping the caffeine, um, and your health will be much better as a result of it. Hard to do in the short term. Um, sorry, hard to do in the long term, but we just we pretty much do it for a short period, get the body back to good health so we can enjoy ourselves a little bit more. Okay, so there's also su supplements designed to improve adrenal f function. They've got some of the nutrients that the adrenals run on. Um, there's also other stuff that helps with their function as well. And then, of course, sleep and rest. Okay, sleep is the best stress metabolizer on the planet. Okay, so if the more you can rest and sleep, the more your body will be able to regenerate and the more it will be able to take care of the various hormone imbalances that occur in the background when the glands are tired. Okay, so sleep and rest is a big one. Don't be worried about having enough and 
sleep, don't get guilty or anything like that. You'll often find if, if you have a quick hour's kip that you'll be much more productive when you get back up. If you try and sit there and push through it, you're often not that productive, your work quality's not that good, you feel stressed, tired, it just makes it too hard. So just listen to your body, have a quick rest and then jump back into it and you'll find that it works much better. Okay, so that's about it on stress and cortisol. Um, we hope you enjoyed the recording. Okay, bye.